of Jesus. We want to just thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing us to come together your Saturday, Heavenly Father, the days that I have a holy convocation so we can learn more about you. And as your word goes forth, Heavenly Father, give us an understanding, Lord God, not just an understanding your word, Heavenly Father, but also to apply it to our lives. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. The title of today's lesson is The Wilderness. Only the righteous will enter in during the great tribulation or Jacob's trouble. The wilderness. Only the righteous will enter in during the great tribulation, which is also called Jacob's trouble. And as we read every, uh, through every Sabbath day, we're going to read Psalms 119, 165, and 176. Psalms 119, 165 to 176. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Lord, I have hope for thy salvation, and done thy commandments. My soul hath kept thy testimonies, and I love them exceedingly. I have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies, for all my ways are before thee. Let my cry come near before thee, O Lord. Give me understanding according to thy word. Let my supplication come before thee. Deliver me according to thy word. My lips shall utter praise, but thou hast taught me thy statutes. My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteousness. Let thy hand help me, for I have chosen thy precepts. I have longed for thy salvation, O Lord, and the law is my delight. Let my soul live, and it shall praise thee, and let thy judgments help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I did not forget thy commandments. Amen. So dealing with the lesson again, the wilderness. Only the righteous will enter in during the great tribulation or Jacob's trouble. Because see, right now, I know the doctrine that uh, probably may have come out mm, probably around like maybe like the 19th century where they're saying that, you know, they would take... Um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and use that word caught up, and then they use it and change it for the rapture. They, they believe that when the, when the Antichrist is going to rule for those three, well, they think it's going to be a seven-year tribulation. Three and a half years is going to be peace, and then the other three and a half years is going to be nothing but war and, and evil going on around the world. And, the way, and, and what Jesus is going to do during those last three and a half years, he's supposed to catch up the church and bring them to heaven while all this evil is going on in the world. Well, the Bible never says that. Like I said, that's, that's a doctrine. That's a made-up doctrine. Even What's that movie called by uh, Kirk Cameron? Uh, Left Behind. They even have movies and stuff based upon a doctrine like that. But the Bible says that the wilderness is the place of safety for the righteous. We're going to still be on earth. We don't have, God doesn't have to take us out of, out of the earth to protect the ones that love him. Like said, we can be here on earth still while the whole world is going through the Great Tribulation. He will have a place of safety for us. That's called the wilderness. Which, uh, which is the Sinai Peninsula. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and start this off in Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7, 1 through 8. Daniel chapter 7, 1 through 8. Remember, no one is going to be raptured into heaven. That's, that's, that's a false doctrine. God knows how to keep his, his believers um, and his saints down here safe while on earth. The same way how he sent those plagues to uh, Egypt, he had the children of Israel in safety in Goshen. So now... Daniel 7, Daniel 7, 1 through 8. Daniel 7, 1 through 8. When you get there, go ahead. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Mm -hmm. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. Mm -hmm. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. So this is, done, this is dealing with the Babylonian uh, uh, empire, dealing with Nebuchadnezzar right here, this first beast right here. Go ahead. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, mm -hmm. and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet of a man, and a man's heart was given to it. Yes. And behold, another beast, a second, like to a bear. And it raised up itself on one side, and it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. So this second beast is dealing with the Medes and the Persians. So like I said, so when, when um, Belshazzar, Nebuchadnezzar's son died, the Medes, Darius the Mede took over, and then he ruled. And after Darius the Mede, that's when you see Cyrus, the, uh, the Persian, then he became king. So that's dealing with the Medes and the Persians. Go ahead. After this I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. Now this, this third beast right here is dealing with, uh, the leopard is dealing with Greece. So with Alexander the Great, when he took over, he came flying through, conquered so many nations, but then he died, he died young. Well, after he died, 
his four generals took over, which is the four wings of a fowl. They took over and started ruling right there. But go ahead. After this, I saw in the night visions that behold a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and brake in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. So the reason why, now this is dealing with Rome now. Now this beast right here is dealing with Rome, and the reason why it's saying that this Rome is different from the other beasts because those other beasts ruled with military. Now this beast right here, the fourth beast, even though they fell as a, as a world superpower in 476 A.D., they rose again in the 5th century dealing with the papal power as far as the dealing with religion. That's why they said this fourth beast is different from the other three because this right here, Rome, Roman Christianity, now they're ruling with religion, not with a sword. Go ahead. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn. Before whom, and that little horn is dealing with the, uh, uh, the Pope or to see the papacy. Go ahead. Before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the root. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man, and a mouth speaking great things. So it says, before whom there were these three of the first horns plucked up by the root. So these three horns were the, uh, these these three uh, horns that were plucked up by um, the little horn, which was the Roman Catholic Church, were the Hurulites, Vandals, and Ostrogoths. They didn't want to follow their religion, so therefore they got plucked up because they were they were they were following their own religion. They didn't want to come into the religion of, the, uh, of Roman Catholicism, so that's why they got plucked up right there. Go ahead, verse 9. I no, beheld. no, 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 no. Go to verse 11 now. Verse 11 through 18. 11 through 18. I beheld. No, 11 through 25. Sorry, 11 through 25. Go ahead. I beheld then because of the voice of the great words, mm -hmm. which the horn spake. I beheld even till the, the beast was slain, mm -hmm. and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Yes. As concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away. Yet their lives were prolonged for a season in time. Mm -hmm. I saw in the night visions, and behold, behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, mm -hmm. and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Mm -hmm. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom, that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. I, Daniel, was Amen. So when you see verse 13, it says, I saw in the night vision, behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came into the Ancient of Days. This Ancient of Days is the Heavenly Father and the Most High. And this Son of Man is Jesus. And then he come, like I said, and we're also going to read where uh, Matt, uh, Daniel 7, uh, 13 and 14, where Jesus is going to fulfill that in Matthew uh, 24, um, 29 through 31. But go ahead, verse 15. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body. And the visions of my head troubled me. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. These great beasts, mm -hmm. which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. Right, so these are the four kingdoms that can arise. So right now we're under the Gentile dynasty. You had, so you had Babylon, the Medes and Persians, the Greeks, now the Romans. These are the four winds, the four Gentile dynasties that that God allowed for them to rule before he returns back. Go ahead. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom mm -hmm. and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, breaking pieces, and stamped the residue of his feet, mm -hmm. and of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell. Even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spake very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellow. See that little that little horn. See his look was more stout than his fellow because see that is the seat of the papacy. That's that's the religious leader. He can be the one that's going to be ruling for those three and a half years. But go ahead, verse twenty one. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints. See the antichrist is going to make war with the saints. Go ahead. And prevailed against them uh -huh. until the ancient of days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Yes. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth. You see how he keeps saying it's going to be diverse from all those other kingdoms? Because remember, they are ruling with religion right now. They say, that's what they're ruling with religion, Roman Christianity. Go ahead. And shall tread it down and break it in pieces. Yes. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise. Remember, those ten horns and those ten kingdoms are, are, are the ten nations that's going to be in the European Union. They're going to be ruling along with the Pope and 
and long with the beast, which is the military leader over the ten nations, over the, ten, uh, over the European Union. Go ahead. And another shall rise after them, mm -hmm. and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. Yes. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. Right. And he shall and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And he's changing times and laws right now. Like I said, they say don't keep the Sabbath day. They say keep the Lord's day, which is Sunday. The Bible says, do not make graven images. That's not even in their Ten Commandments. So they changed their Ten Commandments. They're telling you that Mary's the mediator that we had to go through instead of Jesus. The Roman Catholic Church is speaking uh, great blasphemy words against God because they're going opposite of what God says, but yet they're still using the same Bible. So go ahead. And they shall be given into the hand until a time and times and dividing of times. So that times one year, times two years, and dividing of times is a half a year. So that's three and a half years. So it's going to be a three and a half year period where the Antichrist is going to be ruling. So now it's going to go to Daniel chapter 8. Daniel chapter 8, we're going to read 15 through 27. Daniel chapter 8, we're going to read 15 through 27. And when you get there, go ahead. Daniel chapter 8, 15 through 27. Go ahead. And it came to pass when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision and sought for the meaning. Then behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. Mm -hmm. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of Uli, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. Mm -hmm. So he came near where I stood. And when he came, I was afraid and fell upon my face. But he said unto me, I under, uh, understand, O son of man, mm -hmm. for at the time of the end shall be the vision. Mm -hmm. But as he was speaking with me, I was in a deep sleep on my face toward the ground. But he touched me and set me upright, mm -hmm. and he said, Behold, I will make thee know what shall be at, in the last end of the indignation. For at the time appointed, the end shall be. Right. The ram which thou sawest, having two horns, are the kings of Media and Persia. Yes. And the rough goat is the king of Grecia. Yes. And the goat horn that is between his eyes is the first king. Mm -hmm. Now that being broken, where is Four stood up for it. Right, so you see that, right, so it says in verse 21, and the rough goat is the king of Grecia, which was who? Alexander the Great. And the great horn that is between the eyes is the first king. But then, now that being broken, whereas four stood up for it, that's when, that's when his four generals took over. Four kingdoms shall stand up out of the nation, but not in his own power. 23? 23? Mm -hmm. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressions are come to the full, mm -hmm. a king of fierce countenance and understanding, dark sentences, Stand up. So it's now he's telling you, now it says in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to the full, a king of fierce countenance and understanding of dark sentence or, or riddles shall stand up. That's the seat of papacy right here. That's the Pope. Watch this. Go ahead. And his power shall be mighty, uh -huh. but not by his own power. Remember, he's not getting, he's not, remember, he's, he's getting his power from Satan. You can read that in Revelation chapter 13. Satan is the one that's given his uh, human power to rule for seven. For uh, 42 months, which is three and a half years. Go ahead. And he shall destroy wonderfully, and shall prosper and practice, and shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. See, that's what I'm saying. During this great tribulation of Jacob's trouble, he's coming after the saints. Go ahead. And, let's see, and through his policy also he shall cause craft to, to prosper in his land, mm -hmm. and shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. You see, by peace he shall destroy many. And what else? He shall also stand up against the prince of princes. And who is the prince of princes? That's Jesus. So he's going to stand up against Jesus when, when the Lord returns. But go ahead and watch this. But he shall be broken with all hands. Yeah, see, the Lord is going to destroy him at his coming, but he's going to stand up against him because, remember, he's the Antichrist sitting in the temple declaring himself as God. Go ahead. And that's it. That's it. Okay. So now let's go ahead and go to Ezekiel chapter 8. Ezekiel chapter 8. Yeah, Ezekiel chapter 8. We're going to read 5 through 18. Ezekiel chapter 8, 5 through 18. Ezekiel chapter 8, 5 through 18. And when you get there, go ahead. Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north. And behold, toward northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. Right. He said furthermore unto me, Son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committed here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary. Mm -hmm. But turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. Mm. And he brought me to the door of the court. And 
when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. And he said unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in, and behold, the wicked abominations that they do here. Mm -hmm. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things and abominable beasts, and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. Inside the church. Go ahead. And there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Jaazniah, mm -hmm. the son of Shaphan. Now these are, it says seventy of the ancients. These are supposed to be the wise men. It's supposed to be teaching the commandments of God. But yeah, they're, they're, they're into idolatry. Go ahead. Inside the church. Go ahead. With every man his censer in his hand. Mm -hmm. And a thick cloud of incense went up. And then said he unto, the, unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man <coughs> has chambers of his in imagery. Or oh, the room or the imagery means the room of his own idol. Go ahead. But they say, the Lord seeth us not. Right. See, so they don't think the Lord is seeing because they think that they don't think the Lord sees, but God sees exactly what he's doing. He's showing Ezekiel what all these people are doing because a lot of times people are doing dirt. They think that God doesn't see the dirt that they're doing because they might be in the house of closed doors. No, listen, God can see exactly what you're doing. Man may not, but God does. Go ahead. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. Yes. He said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations mm. than they do. Yes. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Mm. And he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. Right, so he's talking about right here, dealing with Tammuz. Verse 14 says, Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there was women weeping for Tammuz. The third detestable practice was worshiping Tammuz, the Babylonian god of spring. He, he said he was also said to be the husband or lover of the goddess Ishtar. The followers of the cult of Tammuz believed that green vegetation had, uh, died in the hot summer because Tammuz had died and descended into the underworld. Thus, worshippers weep and mourn his death. In the springtime, when the new vegetation appeared, they rejoiced, believing that Tammuz had come back to life. So that's what the did. With. Remember, Ishtar is also the god of Elstig, which is the fertility god of Easter. That's key. It's tied in with Easter, but go ahead. Verse, uh, where are you at now? Verse 16. 16, thanks, okay. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men. Yes. With their backs toward the temple of the Lord, mm. and their faces towards the east. Mm. And they worshiped the sun. They're worshiping the sun. Not the sun, not the, not the son of God. They're worshiping the S-U-N. Go ahead. And God said, we're not supposed to do that. And he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? It is a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here. Mm -hmm. For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. Mm -hmm. And lo, they put the bench, the branch, to their nose. Mm -hmm. Therefore will I also deal in fury. My eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. So now he's not going to hear them. So now we're going to go to the very next chapter. We're going to see how um, God's going to, um, he's going to put a mark on the ones that do believe in God so where, so when God sends that wrath to the city that they will be spared. The same way when, when, when the old earth is going to come upon the great tribulation or Jacob's trouble, God's going to make sure he's going to spare his loved ones or the ones that seek him in the wilderness. These right here are going to also be spared during this time when, um, when, when, when this evil comes upon these idolaters right here. Ezekiel chapter 9, 1 through 11. Go ahead. Ezekiel 9, 1 through 11. He cried also in my ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, mm -hmm. even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. Yes. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, mm -hmm. which lieth toward the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, mm -hmm. with a rider's inkhorn. With a rider's inkhorn, that means like with, with, with the case brazen. Go ahead. With the rider's inkhorn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. Right, that brazen altar, that bronze altar. But did you see that this man right here is an angel though? Like I said, what he's going to do? Go ahead. And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, mm -hmm. whereupon he was to the threshold of the house. Mm -hmm. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto him, 
Watch this. Mm -hmm. Go through the midst of the city, yes. through the midst of Jerusalem, uh -huh. and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. So we saw in the temple how they were all worshiping you know, idols and having their back toward the temple, worshiping the sun, and weeping for Tammuz. He said, okay, now it's going to be some ones out there saying, man, these guys don't need to be doing this. Like, we should be serving the Lord the Lord God instead. He's out here, they, they're doing these abominable acts. So now God said, okay, so the ones that have that mentality, the ones that love God and seek God, he's putting a mark on them. He's going to spare them as he brings wrath to the city. Go ahead. And to the others he said in my hearing, go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare. Right. Let you have your pity. Slay utterly old and young. Slay old and young. I'm going to kill them all. If they don't have that mark, kill them. Go ahead. Both maids and little children and uh, women. Wow. Come out, come, but come not near and may, Upon whom is in the mark. Yes. And begin at my sanctuary. And begin at the house of God. Remember, even Peter even said judgment is going to be with, is going to begin with the house of the Lord first. But go ahead. Then they began at the ancient men, which were before the house. See, they began with them because remember, these ancient men are supposed to be the ones teaching people the commandments of God, but yet they're doing idolatrous things inside the temple. Go ahead. And he said unto them, Defile the house and fill the courts with the flame. Mm -hmm. Go ye forth. And they went forth and slew in the city. So the angels came in, they were slew, they were killing people in the city that were practicing idolatry and disobeying God. But remember, the ones that had the mark on them, that was marked with the inkhorn, they were spared. The angels did not spare the same way like with the Passover lamb, with the Passover in Egypt. Remember, you had that blood post on the door, then the death angel came and killed all the firstborn. But if you were spared, if you had that blood, the same way like us, we had the blood of Jesus on us. That's why we, you know, we just commemorate the Passover. It means we can pass over from death, which is the second death, which is the lake of fire. As long as we're covered in the blood of Jesus, when it's time to come up for judgment day, we will not get thrown into the lake of fire like the other ones who, who rejected Jesus. Go ahead. And it came to pass, while they were slaying them, and I was left, mm -hmm. that I fell upon my face and cried and said, Ah, Lord God, wilt thou destroy all the residue of Israel in any pouring, in, in thy pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? Mm -hmm. Then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great. Exceeding great. Mm. And the land is full of blood, uh -huh. and the city full of perverseness. Yes. For they say, The Lord hath forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth not. See, they think the Lord don't see them, but the Lord sees everything that you're doing. Go ahead. And as for me also, my eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. Mm -hmm. And behold, the man clothed with linen, which have the inkhorn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as thou hast commanded. Right, so what it says right here, verse 7 says, Then he said unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great, and the land is full of blood, and the city of perverseness. For they say, The Lord hath forsaken the or earth, and the Lord seeth not. So, right here, when you go like to Proverbs, um, Proverbs 15 and 3, Proverbs 15 and 3 says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. So it says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. And we're going to see what those eyes are. Because in Zechariah chapter 4, Zechariah chapter 4 tells us what those, what those eyes are. Zechariah chapter 4, where it says, yeah, Isaiah chapter 4, I mean, Zechariah chapter 4, verse 10. It says, For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. See, they are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro through the earth. So those seven are the eyes that run to and fro through the earth. So God has, when you read the Revelation chapter 1, Revelation chapter 1, Right here, the Revelation chapter 1, it talks about, in um, starting at verse 20, it says, The mystery of the seven stars which saw us in my right hand are the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the seven angels of the seven churches with the seven candlesticks which thou saw us in the seven churches. So God has seven angels running to and fro from earth, reporting back to God all the evil and good that's being done upon earth. So those are the, those, those are the seven, those are his eyes, so they're reporting back to him reporting back to God. So now, let's go to Ezekiel, uh, Revelation 13. 
Revelation 13. Revelation 13, 1 through 8. Revelation 13, 1 through 8. Revelation 13, 1 through 8. Can we get there? Go ahead. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, mm -hmm. having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horn ten crowns, and upon his head is the name of blasphemy. Remember, so the seven heads, remember, one was Babylon, two was the Medes of Persians, uh, Greece was three, but remember, when he fell, his four generals took over, which makes six, and then the seventh one is Rome. So that's the, those are the seven uh, heads, and then the ten horns are the ten nations that's going to be the European Union ruling with the Antichrist and the beast. Go ahead, verse two. And the beast which I saw was like unto, like a, I'm sorry. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. And the leopard, remember, that was Greece. Uh -huh. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. Remember, that was the Medes and Persians. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And there we go, that was Babylon. Go ahead. And the dragon gave him power. Uh -huh. And his seat, a great authority. And yeah. seat, great authority. Yes. So the dragon, that's the devil. Go ahead. Verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, mm -hmm. and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. And remember, his his wound was healed. His wound was um was wounded to death in 476 AD when Rome fell as a superpower, world power, but then they rose back into power, a papal power with religion. That's how they rule again now. Go ahead, verse 4. And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. Yes. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Mm -hmm. And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Yes, remember that's three and a half years. Go ahead. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God. Yes. To blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And remember, he's going to be sitting in that temple that those Edomites are about to build. He's going to be sitting in that temple declaring himself as God. That's what he's going to be doing. Go ahead. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Yes. And to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Yes. Whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. if anything, oh, yeah. So now uh, go to um, verse 11 through 18. 11 through 18. Go ahead. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. Yes. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. And he exercised all the power. See, that other beast is talking about the false prophet. That's the false prophet. Now, go ahead. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him. Uh -huh. And caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. Mm -hmm. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from, the, from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Yes. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of the, those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, mm -hmm. saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by the sword, and did live. Right. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, and that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Mm -hmm. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their sight, on their forehead. See, so when it says we see the mark, we read earlier where it says that the angel put an ink horn and he marked those, the ones that were crying out saying that, you know, we shouldn't be serving these false gods, we should be keeping the commandments of God. This isn't a literal mark. You got some people thinking that, you know, they're going to put a chip in your hand or that, no, it's not a literal mark. We're going to see that it's not a literal mark. But keep going. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the work, um, that the mark or the name of the beast or the number in his name, of his name. Uh -huh. Here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. Remember, it's a number of a man. It's the number of a man. Go ahead. And his number is 603 score and 6. Which is 666. So that's, so like I said, you can see that title, Vicarious Philly God. That is the title that they gave to the Pope, which if you put those numbers up, they equal up in Roman numerals 666. But right here, verse 16 says that he calls all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in the right hand or in the forehead. Remember, this mark isn't a literal mark. That mark is going to let you know who are they following. And that mark is talking about dealing with Roman Christianity. They're going to know if you're with them or not by the doctrine that you're following is preaching. So that's how they're going to know if you're with him, this beast right here, the Pope, who's the one that's spreading Roman Christianity right now, they're going to know if you have that mark. But see, now we're going to see what God's mark is because you see, this mark is in the right hand or in the forehead. We're going to see what God's mark is, our sign. Let's go now to Deuteronomy.
Deuteronomy 6. Remember, it's not a literal mark, though. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. This is the mark of God right here in our right hands and our foreheads. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. And when you get there, go ahead. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. Yes. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shall talk of them with thy let's see, talk with of them when thou sittest in the thine house. Yes. And when thou walkest by the way, yes. and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as frontless. So you see that? So now these commandments now of God, he says that thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand or upon the front of between thy eyes. So now our sign, so so that's how you, you be, uh, they'll be they'll know, because remember, because not all Israelites, well, not all Israelites, but even believers, Gentile believers are going to make it to the wilderness. And they're going to know who they are by that sign because they're going to be like, hold up, these are the ones that are keeping the commandments of God and things like that. They'll, so they'll know, so the, the, uh, the Pope would know that they're not with them. So that's why they don't end up being beheaded, you know what I'm saying, or, or being tortured to kill because they won't be able to buy or sell during that time. But you see, our sign is the ones that keep the commandments of God in their right hand or the front is between their eyes. Verse 9. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. Amen, amen. So that's, that's, so that's how they'll be able to differentiate and see who are the ones that's following the Pope, Roman Christianity, or the ones out there who are who are of God. Remember, he's gonna, remember his, his job is to make war with the saints. Like, he's going to go after the ones. It was no different during the time of the Spanish Inquisition um, about them doing going around trying to see if, what, what doctrine were you following. If you were following the wrong doctrine, they were burning you up at the stake. So now that Spanish Inquisition that happened during that time is going to be on a worldwide stage during the Great Tribulation because he's going to have power from Satan. So now let's go ahead and go to Deuteronomy, I mean, uh, Matthew 24. Matthew 24, 15 through 22. Matthew 24, 15 through 22. Matthew 24, 15 through 22. And when you get there, go ahead. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel, mm -hmm. the prophet, stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, readeth, let him understand. Right. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Yes. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them. Let's see. Okay, yeah, to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. Or breastfeeding in those days. Go ahead. He said woe unto them because this can be a horrible time. If you have a, if you have a child, you have a breastfeed, do all these things, hey. Because when that bomb is desolation stands in the holy place, you better hurry and flee. But he's telling you to flee to the wilderness, okay? That's the only place of safety, though. But go ahead, keep going. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. For then shall be great tribulation. Or Jacob's trouble, same thing. Go ahead. Such as was not since in the beginning of the world uh -huh. to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Yes. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be short. Amen, amen. So now let's go and go to Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3, we're going to read 10 through 12. Um, so why why can't we go, like, fly in the winter? No, you say, no, he was just giving, just giving an example. Like, it's going to be a bad situation. Plus, he would say, like, don't even go back. It's going to be a time so bad. That's why I said, don't even go back to your house. You just didn't, didn't even grab your things. He let you know, like, it's urgent. He, that's why he was just letting you know the urgency of where it's, you better flee because when that... When that Pope stands in that temple by the way he's going to build, it's going to be nothing but carnage and chaos around the world. So that's what he was, he was letting you know the, uh, the importance of, of trying to get to the uh, wilderness, the place of safety. That's all. So now, let's just go um, Revelation 3. Revelation 3, 10 through 12. Revelation chapter 3, 10 through 12. Revelation chapter 3, 10 through 12. Go ahead. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience. Yes. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. Yes. We shall come upon all the world and try them that dwell upon the earth. So, we, so this hour of temptation is going to dwell upon it. This is talking about the great tribulation or Jacob's trouble. It's going to come upon the whole earth. But go ahead. Behold, I come quickly. Uh -huh. Hold that fast which thou hast, that 
no man take that crown. So he says, Behold, I come quickly, and hold fast that which thou hast, that no man take your crown. Meaning, like, look, I'm giving you this understanding, so make sure don't let any man come and try to tell you any other, uh, uh, anything opposite of what I told you, because if they do, they're going to end up taking your crown. But Jesus said, Look, this is what you need to do, and when you overcome, what's going to happen? Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. Yes. And he shall go no more out. Yes. And I will write upon him the name of my God. Yes. And the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. Amen. Amen. So you see that though, but remember verse 10 is key. It says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world to try or to test them that dwell upon earth, which is a great tribulation. So now let's go ahead and go to um, Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12, 1 through 17. Revelation chapter 12, 1 through 17. Revelation chapter 12, 1 through 17. When you get there, go ahead. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. Yes. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, uh -huh. and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. So it says right here, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head was the crown of twelve stars. So that woman is dealing with Israel. So when you go to, um, when you go to Genesis uh, chapter 37, when you go to Genesis chapter 37, verse 9, Genesis chapter 37, verse 9, where it says, this, uh, this is Joseph's dream and dream. He says, And he dreamed yet another dream, and told it to his brethren, and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me, which means pretty much they um they bowed that they bowed lowly unto him. But what you're seeing now in verse 12, uh, Revelation 12 and verse 1 says that there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head. And the crown of uh, 12 stars. Remember, when you include Joseph, that'll be 12 stars. So that's letting you know that that woman is talking about Israel. Israel is that woman. But go ahead. Verse uh, 2. Revelation 12 and 2. Go and ahead. she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. Right. So now you see also, like it says, a dual prophecy, meaning like the woman is Israel, but also we understand that Mary is the one that also gave birth to Jesus as well. But go ahead. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, mm -hmm. and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and yes. they cast them to the earth. And those third parts of the stars of heaven were the angels. Go ahead. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, uh -huh. for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And remember, Herod the Great was out there trying to slay all children, uh, uh, males, two and under. So that's what he was doing. So the devil had Herod try to slay all children, two or under, but that's what happened after uh, uh, Joseph went to flee into Egypt to, to get away from Herod. Go ahead. And she brought forth a man child mm -hmm. who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Mm -hmm. And her child was caught up unto God and to be into his throne. Yes. And the woman fled un into the wilderness. So the woman fled into the wilderness. That's Israel. Go ahead. Where she had a place prepared of God. Uh -huh. And they should that they should feed her. There, a thousand, two hundred, and threescore days. So right here it says, the verse uh, six says, And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had, this is where she had a place prepared of God that should feed her there, one thousand, two hundred, sixty days, which is three and a half years. That's what he's telling you. So for those three and a half year period, they're going to be, uh, they're going to be safe. They're going to be safe. Go ahead. And there was war in heaven. Uh -huh. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought. And his angels. Yes. And prevail not. Neither was place, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. Mm -hmm. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Yes. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, mm -hmm. which accused them before our God, day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Mm -hmm. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Mm -hmm. And when the, when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child mm, and see, the woman. So look, so when a dragon, 
saw that he was cast into the earth. He persecuted the woman, which is Israel, which brought forth a man child. What else? Verse 14. Verse 14. And, the, and to the woman were given two wings of the e great eagle, uh -huh. that she might fly into the wilderness. See, that she might fly into where? Into the wilderness. Uh huh. Into her place where she is nourished for a time. One year. In time. Two years. And half a time. Three and a half years. From the face of the service. Remember, so for the face of the service. So when you look at that, so that three and a half year time period, we're, like I said, the woman, the, the, the Israel is going to be in the wilderness safe. You know what I'm saying? Safe from the what? The great tribulation or Jacob's trouble. But what's, what, what's going to happen, though? We're, we're look at verse 15, though. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. And that flood is talking about the army. Go ahead. That he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. Uh -huh. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Right, so now, so look, so these are the ones that are trying to flee and trying to get to the wilderness. So so the ones that get to make it to the wilderness, they'll be able to make it just in time. So now that they made it just in time, the devil's going to be mad. So what is he going to do? And the dragon was wroth with the woman. Yeah, he was wroth because he's like, I'm trying to get to him, but he couldn't get to him. So what are you going to do? And went to make war with the remnant of her seed. So the remnant of the seed, so the ones that didn't make it, is going to what? And who are the remnant of her seed? Um, who are the remnant of her seed? Go ahead. Which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Right, so those are the ones. So like I said, so they may not have the understanding or know how to get there or may, I don't know, whatever it is, they didn't have a chance to get to the uh, to the wilderness. So therefore, he's going to turn and make war with them because they didn't make it. You know, something like that. And like I said, you can read Revelation chapter 20. A lot of them are going to be beheaded, too, as well. You know, so they're going to be beheaded because, like I said, they're not going to make it. But they're also going to refuse to take the mark because they understand you take that mark. There's no, there's, there's, like I said, you take that mark. Matter of fact, you take that mark, it's over for you. Uh, Revelation 14 and 9, it says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast of his image and receive the mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture in the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. They shall have no rest day or night who worship the beast in his image and whosoever received the mark of his name. So, like I said, it's good. It's good. Like I said, it's good. Remember, uh, you can even read in Daniel that even the elect are going to be full. Whereas, you know, like, you know what, man? Like, man, I, 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 guess, they, I guess, you know, they, they're going to fall and give in to the temptation and when they end up doing that, hey, God hey, they will not enter into the kingdom of God they're going to go into the lake of fire with, with the devil and his angels so now let's go ahead and, go, now let's go ahead and pinpoint this uh, this wilderness let's go to Isaiah 41 Isaiah 41, 18 through 20 because remember, this wilderness is the only place of safety, because I know like right now you got these Israelites out here who, who's out here buying like all like, you know, buying land, they buying you know, 50, 60 acres, 100 acres and they're putting up the land saying, look, what we need to do is go ahead and cultivate and, and farm and get our own chickens and do things like that. Because they're saying that when Jacob's trouble comes or the great tradition comes, you guys won't be able to buy a symbol. See, we'll have our own land right here, so we'll, we'll be able to be safe during that time of great tribulation. Like, no, you're not. You're, they, yeah. God says only one place, and that's the wilderness. If you're not in that wilderness, yeah, hey, you're going to have to, <laughs> you have to fend for yourself. You know, like that. But they think that by them being off the land or off the grid, that they'll be safe during that time. They will not. Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41, 18 through 20. Isaiah 41, 18 through 20. And when you get there, go ahead. I will open rivers and high places. Yes. And fountains in the midst of the valley. Yes. I will make the wilderness a pool of water. Uh. And the dry land of springs of water. Right. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar, the shita tree, and the myrtle mm -hmm. and the oil tree. I will set in the desert the fir tree and the pine and the box tree together mm. that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord have done this and the Holy One of Israel have considered it. Now just I'm created. Yeah, now just imagine this. Here it is. Like during this time, during the great tribulation, like because I'm saying you can see all, all kind of news outlets are recording all these th uh, different things going on. And just imagine you're seeing over there by the Sinai Peninsula between, like I said, Jordan, Egypt, and Israel. That area is called the Sinai Peninsula. It's nothing but desolate desert. Now, just imagine you start seeing pools of water and streams and all the different trees coming up. They're like, what in the world is that? But God is only creating that place for safety so that when the great tradition comes upon the world, only the rights will be able to enter into that wilderness and be safe during the time of the, uh, uh, Jacob's trouble or the great tribulation. Let's go ahead and read that. Isaiah 35. Isaiah 
Isaiah 35, 1 through 9. Isaiah 35, 1 through 9. Isaiah 35, 1 through 9. Can you get there? Go ahead. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them. Should, right, they'll be glad for us. Go ahead. And the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. Uh-huh. It shall blossom abundantly. Yes. And rejoice even with joy and singing. Yes. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it. Uh -huh. The excellency of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Yes. Strengthen ye the weak hands mm. and confirm the feeble knees. Yes. Say to them that are of a fearful heart. You remember, say to them that are of a fearful heart because this can be a trying time. There can be so much evil going on, like preparing up. Like, look, these, like, sick people are going to be terrified about what's going on. He's going to say, what? Be strong. What else? Say to them of a, that are of a fearful heart, be strong. Fear not. Right. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Right. Even God will a recompense. He will come and save you. Right. He's going to come and save you. We'll be protected inside this wilderness, though. Go ahead. Then the eyes of the blind shall be open, uh -huh. and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Yes. Then shall the lame man leap as in a heart. Like a deer. Uh-huh. And the tongue of the dumb sing. Right, the one that can't speak now, they'll be able to speak now. Sing now. Go ahead. For in the wilderness shall waters break out. Yes. And the streams of the desert. Yes. And the parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water. Uh-huh. And in the habitation of dragons, mm -hmm. where each Dragons, those, those, those are the jackals. Those are jackals. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Shall be grass with reeds and rushes, mm -hmm. and in highways shall be there. And the way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. So this way is right. So it's only the way of holiness. So no one, like I said, the only way you'll be able to enter into this wilderness during this time of Jacob's trouble or the great, great tribulation is if you are a righteous person keeping the commandments of God. Because you got some people say, well, look, well, when I see you flee, brother, I'm just going to just follow you. No, you know what I'm saying? You know, say, no, because God's not going to let know that uh, the air is not going to... Uh, the fools will not err in. But go ahead. Watch this. The unclean shall not pass over. The unclean will not be able to get in there. Go ahead. But it shall be for those. Uh-huh. The wayfaring men. The wayfaring men. The, those that walk in the way of righteousness. What else? Thou fools shall not err there. Those in. fools will not err in. Like I said, so if you think that you're breaking the law and, uh, and, uh, and not keeping the commands of God, but you really think that you're going to make it to that wilderness, no, you will not. Go ahead. What else? So while we're in there, what's going to happen? No lion shall be there. Uh, what else? Nor any ravenous beast. Shall go up thereon. Uh -huh. It shall be. It shall not be found there. But the redeemed shall walk there. Only the redeemed are going to be are, are going to be there. That's why I said so. So when we're there for those three and a half years, this could be nothing but like I said, we don't have to worry about any animals trying to hurt us or harm us. You know, in the desert, there's nothing all kind of wild beasts out there. So like, we don't have to worry about anything harming us inside that wilderness because that's going to be a place of safety during the great tribulation. Let's go now to Psalms 91. Psalms 91, because see, Psalms 91 is also talking about the same situation right here. Psalms 91, 1 through 16. 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 When you get there, go ahead. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Right, that secret place of the wilderness, because people do not know about that, but go ahead. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, mm -hmm. my God, in Him will I trust. Yes. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, mm -hmm. and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His fe feathers, and under His wings shall thou trust His truth. Shall be thy shield and buckler. Right, so you see that, right? Under his wings, so it says, right? Remember, we read that in um in Revelation uh, 12. Um, in Revelation 12, it says right here, Revelation 12 and 14 says, And to the woman were given two great wings of an e of uh, two great two wings of a great eagle, that she may fly into the wilderness and into her place where she is nourished for a time, times, and a half a time for the face of the serpent. So right here, right here, he said, he shall cover thee uh, with his feathers and under his wings shall he trust. He trusts, he says, his trust shall be like shield and buckler. Verse 5, what else? Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by day, mm -hmm. nor, by, nor for the arrow that flyeth by night. So he said, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by day and for the arrows that fly by night. Now, remember, so when it's talking about these arrows, they ain't talking about no bone arrows. You're talking about missiles, you know what I'm saying? Because you're going to be seeing all this stuff. Remember, this is the sign up for this is the wilderness is right there around Israel. So we'll be seeing all this going on, but yet nothing's going to harm us. Go ahead. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in the darkness, uh -huh. nor for the destruction 
that wasteth at noonday. Right. Watch a, this. A thousand shall fall at thy side, right. and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Because remember, during this great tribulation, for those three and a half year period, the Bible said a half of the population is going to die. So about four billion people are going to die within that three and a half year span. So when it says a thousand are going to fall at your uh they said a thousand going to fall at your left side, and then a, a thousand going to fall at your, uh, ten thousand at your right side. We're going to be seeing all that's going on, but nothing's going to harm us. Go ahead. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Uh -huh. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Yes. There shall no evil befall thee. Yes. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Right. Remember, we're going to be protected. The angels are going to protect us. Go ahead. For he shall give his angels charge over thee yes. to keep thee in all thy ways. Uh -huh. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and ab adder, mm -hmm. a young lion and the dragon. The adder's a cold. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample under feet, mm -hmm. because he hath set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him up on high. I will set him on high. Right. Because his because he hath known my name. Mm -hmm. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Mm -hmm. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Right, show his salvation, because we're going to be safe in there during that time. Now we're going to go to Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11, 1 through 12. Revelation chapter 11. 1 through 12. Revelation chapter 11, 1 through 12. And when you get there, go ahead. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood it, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. So right, so right now he's quoting um, he's quoting Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 3, because that's going to be the temple that the Lord is going to build, when Jesus is going to build when he returns. But now he's going to talk about these temples that these Edomites are going to build. Go ahead. But the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not. Mm -hmm. For it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread under uh, foot forty and two months. Yeah, that's forty two months, that's three and a half years. Go ahead. And I will give power unto my two witnesses. Yes. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days, set, closed and sat called. Right, so that's one thousand two hundred and sixty days. Uh, one thousand two hundred and sixty days. Remember, that's also three and a half years. So while the Pope is ruling for those three and a half years, you're going to have these two witnesses, which are the two olive trees, which you can also read in Zechariah chapter 4. They're going to be preaching the gospel during this time as well. So, so, that, so therefore, um, God's going to have, you know, so God's going to combat the Holy, the, um, the Pope by, by having his true gospel be preached so that people can at least try to hear the gospel as well as, even though that um, the Pope is sending out his false, his false doctrine to the world. Go ahead, verse 4. These are the two olive trees. And the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. Yes. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouth and devoured their enemies. Yes. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Yes. These have power to shed heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, mm. and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Yes. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that descended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them, and kill them, mm. and their bodies, their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Right, so remember, so right, so, so those two witnesses are going to be in Jerusalem, that great city, preaching the word of God, combating, you know, say, the, uh, the, the Pope, because remember, the Pope's also in that great city, you know, saying, uh, in his temple, uh, spewing, spewing Roman Christianity, so... They're going to be going after each other. So now he's going to end up getting killed. But what else? Go ahead. Verse 9. And and they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half. Mm -hmm. And shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Right. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another. Because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the, on the earth. Right, and this and the reason why they feel like they're being tormented because all they're doing is preaching the word of God. You know what I'm saying? Why, why everyone else is following with Roman Christianity, they feel like they're being tormented because these these saints right here, are, uh, these two witnesses are telling people to keep the commandments of God while, uh, by the Pope saying not to. Go ahead. Verse 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. Yes. And they stood upon their feet 
and great fear fell upon them, which saw them. Mm. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up on to heaven on, in the cloud, and their enemies beheld them. Right, so the enemies beheld them. So now they think, they see, they, they went to heaven. Like, nah, they didn't go to heaven. No. This right here is talking about the first resurrection. We're going to read that right now. This is dealing with the first resurrection. So now it's going to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we're going to read 13 through 17. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 through 17. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 through 17. Can we get there? Go ahead. But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Mm -hmm. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Right. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Yes. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. That's the seventh trump. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Right. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So you see that, right? So as we said, so they're going to heaven to meet him in the cloud, but they're not going into the third heaven where the Father, Jesus, and the angel reside. He's not going there. They're meeting up in the air, but they're going to show they're going to come back down. We're going to read that. Let's go now to Zechariah chapter 14. Zechariah chapter 14, 1 through 9. See, the, first, the ones in the first resurrection, like I said, God's going to bring them up. They're going to meet Jesus in the air, but they're not going to just stay in the air. They're going to land. As a matter of fact, let's go to what's name first. Let's go to let's go to uh, let's go to Acts chapter one first to get more clarification on that. Let's go to Acts chapter one. Acts chapter one. Acts chapter one. And Acts chapter one. We're going to start at verse. Ver yeah. 9 through 12. Acts chapter 1, 9 through 12. Acts chapter 1, 9 through 12. You get like uh, more clarification, more clarity right here. Acts chapter 1, 9 through 12. Go ahead. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Uh -huh. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, he went up. Behold, behold two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee. Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Yes. This same Jesus, which uh -huh. is taken up from you into heaven, shall come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Uh -huh. Then return they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey. So you see that. So they see that Jesus. So they're standing on Mount Olives. They see Jesus were sending up to heaven. And Mount Olives, he said, but this same Jesus that you see, is going to return like manner, meaning that he's going to return to the same Mount Olives that they see him going, ascending up into heaven. Now, let's go ahead and go to Zechariah chapter 14 now. Zechariah, so now we, so you can understand that. So, he's going to come back, standing on Mount Olives, but he's going to be coming with his saints. And those are the ones that's in the first resurrection to help fight the nation in Jerusalem. Zechariah 14. Zechariah 14, 1 through 9. Zechariah 14, 1 through 9. Can we get there? Go ahead. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, mm -hmm. and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. Yes. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. Yes. And the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Yes. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of the battle. Uh -huh. And his feet shall stand in the day upon the Mount of Olives. See, so right, so we see this is Jesus now. Like I said, he's coming back down to earth, and he's standing on Mount, on Mount Olives. Go ahead. Which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. He's going to split. That's what we say. They know he's coming with power. He's going to split. Go ahead. And there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. Uh -huh. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal. Ye, yea, ye shall flee, mm -hmm. as ye fled from before the earthquake in the day of Uzziah, king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come, uh -huh. and all the saints with thee. He's coming with the saints. And who are those saints? 
saints, those are the ones that's in the first resurrection that come up with the Lord to fight those nations in Jerusalem. Go ahead. It shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark, but it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light, and it shall be in that day that living water shall go out from Jerusalem. And these living waters talk about the word of God. The word of God is going to go forth from Jerusalem. What else? Half of them from the former sea and half of them towards the hinder sea. Uh -huh. In summer and in the winter shall they be. Uh -huh. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. And that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. Amen. Amen. So, right. So, he said he's coming with the saints, but they're coming to uh, Jerusalem to fight all those nations in the battle. Remember, the Pope is in there. He's in Jerusalem sitting in that temple declaring himself as God. So, that's why when all the nations are coming up to battle... Because people think that they're coming up to battle against those Edomites. No, they're coming up to battle against Jerusalem because that's where the Pope is at. That's why they're there. Not because those Edomites are there right now. So now it's going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30, 1 through 6. Deuteronomy chapter 30, 1 through 6. So we see that Jesus is coming with his saints, but also he's coming to gather his people as well, his elect, the children of Israel, as well as Gentiles that take hold of his covenant as well. Deuteronomy 30, 1 through 6. When you get there, go ahead. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, which I have set before thee, mm -hmm. and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations with the Lord thy God have driven thee, mm -hmm. and shall return unto the Lord thy God, and thou shalt obey his voice according to all that I command thee this day, thou and thy children, with all thine heart and with all thy soul, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee. Mm -hmm. And return and gather thee from all the nations where the Lord thy God have scattered thee. Mm. If any of thine be driven out of out into the outmost parts of heaven, yes. from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. Yes. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed, and thou shalt possess it. And he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy father. Yes. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thy heart and the heart of thy seed, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, that thou mayest live. Right, so you see that verse 4, it says, If any of thine be driven out to the outmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. So now let's go ahead and see where he's going to do that. Let's go now to Matthew 24. Matthew 24, we're going to read 29 through 31. Matthew 24. 29 through 31. Matthew 24. 29 through 31. Matthew 24. 29 through 31. When we get there, go ahead. Matthew 24. 29 through 31. Matthew 24. 29 through 31. When you get there, go ahead. Immediately after the tribulation, this is a great tribulation. Go ahead. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, yes, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, uh -huh. and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory, mm. and he shall send his angels with the with the great sound of trumpets. Mm -hmm. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So you see that's all right. He's coming to gather the elect. And we just see we, he's coming to gather the children of Israel. Because when you read Isaiah 45 and 4, it says, For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, my elect. You know what I'm saying? So he's coming to gather the children of Israel, as we just saw in Deuteronomy chapter 30, to bring us back into our own land. But now, but before that happens, though, we have to go through the wilderness now. So now, let's go ahead and go to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20, 33 through 38. Exodus chapter 20, 33 through 38. I'm sorry, Ezekiel. I'm sorry, Ezekiel chapter 20. I'm sorry, Ezekiel chapter 20, 33 through 38. Ezekiel chapter 20, 33 through 38. Ezekiel chapter 20. 33 through 38. And when you get there, go ahead. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out, will 
I rule over you. Yes. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries where ye are scattered. Yes. With a mighty hand and with stretched out arm and with fury poured out. Yes. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. Yes. And there will I plead with you face to face, like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. So will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. Yes. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. Now this bond of the covenant is talking about the bond of the new covenant now. This is the new covenant. Now right now we're up under the new covenant because we accept Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. However, not all of our people accept him. So now when he brings us to the wilderness, he's going to purge out all the rebels. And now he's going to bring us into the bond of the covenant. So now all of Israel will be up under the bond of the covenant. Those, and like I said, you have to accept him. If you don't accept him, what's going to happen? Go ahead. And I will purge out from among you the rebels uh -huh. and them that transgress against right, you. Right, so you're going to have some say, like, even though they come out to the, the great tribulation, they're still not going to be obeying Jesus in the wilderness when he's preaching to them. They're going to be like, nah. I was better off the same way when our forefathers kept out of Egypt. We were better. Uh, we were better off in Egypt eating the melons and the flesh pots. You gonna have some folks that's after seeing all this evil going on in the world. They are gonna say, man, we were better off in America, man. Going to bed. This is it. Eat rib tips and stuff like that. You, you trying to tell me I gotta? I can't eat unclean anymore. I can't do Christmas. All these different things. I can't serve these different guys. No, no. God said, no. You can't do any of those things because you will not enter into my land. Watch this. Keep going. And I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, mm -hmm. and they shall not enter into the land of Israel, mm -hmm. and ye shall know that I am the Lord. That's right, so you see, so they will not enter into the land of Israel. So now let's go back to Isaiah 35 now. Go back to Isaiah 35, we're going to read that last verse, verse 10. Isaiah 35 and 10, remember, it was already once already in the wilderness, the wayfaring, the, the righteous, the righteous were already in there. Remember, he said that the, uh, the wicked error and the fools were not error in. So now, He's going to bring the ransom now. So look at verse 10 now. Uh, Isaiah chapter 35, verse 10. Go ahead. And the ransom of the Lord shall return. So now the ransom of the Lord shall return. So the ones that didn't make it to the first time, he's going to gather those. Remember, he's, he's bringing them back into the wilderness. He's purging out the rebels, the ones that do not want to believe in him, accept his commandments. So now he purged them out. After he did that, now what happened? Read verse 10 again. And the ransom of the Lord shall return. Uh-huh. And come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. Yes. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and signs shall flee away. Amen. Amen. Go to the last one. Last one. Jeremiah 30. Jeremiah 30, 7 through 10. Jeremiah 30, 7 through 10. Remember, he is not raptured us into heaven. Like the Bible said that no man has ascended into heaven except the Son of Man who's come down to heaven. Remember, no one's going to heaven. It's a, it's a place of safety, which is the wilderness. So now, after Jacob's trouble, we're going to see that we're going to, a lot of our people are going to be happy that, 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 that they made it out through this place. Because remember, just imagine seeing uh, about four billion or so people die in a three and a half year span. Like, that's crazy. Let's go now. Jeremiah chapter 30, 7 through 10. Go ahead. Alas, for that great day, that day is great. Right, that's the with the great tribulation. Go ahead. So that none is like it. Uh-huh. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. Right, because you got people right now saying, yeah, brother, you know, we're in Jacob's trouble right now. I'm like, no, no, we're not. Now, Jacob's trouble, you're going to know Jacob's trouble because that's going to be a three and a half year span where there's going to be nothing but hell going on in, in, this, in this earth. So that's definitely not talking about Jacob's trouble where we're in right now. Like I said, that's, that's to come. Go ahead. Well, go ahead. For it shall come to pass in that day saith the Lord of hosts, uh -huh. that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, uh -huh. and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. Right, because see, now we will no longer be in this captivity right now, because God's going to gather us and bring us back to our own land. Go ahead. But they shall serve the Lord their God, and David their king, uh -huh. whom I will raise up unto them. Right. Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, yes. for lo, I will save thee from afar, uh -huh. and thy seed from the land of their captivity. Uh -huh. And Jacob shall return, yes. and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. Amen, amen. So now, like I said, so we see it dealing with the uh, the wilderness. The only, it says only the righteous will enter in during the great tribulation of Jacob's trouble. But see, now after like all, of, like remember, the Bible says also in Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8, that two-thirds of our people are going to be cut off. Also, it says that even though Israel be a sand of the sea, only a remnant shall be saved. A lot of our people are going to die during this great tribulation, and also a lot of believers are going to die. 
But and, and, and when I say die, I'm not talking about dying as far as them dying for the faith. They could be dying because they were with you. So that's why God's been grabbing, gather the remnant of us um, and bring us back to our own land. But remember, though, we are not going to be raptured into heaven. We have to, uh, and if you want to make that place of safety, wilderness, we have to keep the commandments now and obey Jesus. Go ahead, though. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe, and Jesus love you. Amen. Okay, bye. All right, <laughs> all right, y'all.